What we're looking at today is the Corel TP4046, which is a combination rebar, shear, and bender. It has a maximum capacity of a number 10 rebar. Uh, it can bend a number 10 and can shear a number 9. Uh, it's based on, in terms of capacity, of a 60 tensile of KSI uh, yield and 90 tensile KSI. Uh, just looking at the machine, what we have here is moving from right to left. Yes, you've got your roller pins, bring the material in, and you can bring them in in either direction. The counter bending blocks can be moved in a north to south direction on both sides. Uh, looking at the center, what we have is the drive wheel, okay? And if you take any former, this has a maximum uh, OD size of roughly about 16 inches on the OD. Uh, anywhere on down. Uh, you can take your former, set it here, your drive, your center pin, or your former pin goes right there in the center, and then you have a choice or selection of drive pins on either on either side of the former. Okay, these pins here are work, these are your limit switch p uh, pins. You have a limit switch here and a limit switch here. This machine has a, the capability of making a 360 degree turn in one direction or in the other direction as well. And these, basically, you can fit these anywhere you want to along the driveway. Looking at the controls of the TP4046, what we have here is your on and off button. You can turn this on. You have your director or selection switch for your direction. Right now it's in the zero position. We can turn this to the number one, which will allow us to rotate in the clockwise position. You see, when I turn this and the selector switch on, it turns the power light button on. We're going to make sure that our e-stop is off. And now you hit your green button to start the pump. Then at this point, we're now ready to make our bend in the clockwise direction. If we want to switch over to a, a separate direction, in this case, it would be the counterclockwise motion. You switch it over to zero, back to two, your power button's on, you hit your green button, and now you're ready to make a bend in the counterclockwise direction. You may have noticed that once we make these bends, it's going to stop at a certain position. We have limit switches. This is always going to be your start position, and we have another limit switch here. That is controlled by these pins, or your limit switch pins, and you can place those anywhere you would like around the drive wheel. So if you wanted to make a 45 degree bend or a 180 degree bend, you can set these limit switches uh, based upon the bend or the angle. If you wanted to over-rotate it based on the spring back, you just basically place these to give it a little bit more, a little bit less. But you have 360 degrees around in which you can place these pins. One time, if you're going to make a bend on a former, for example, and you make a bend, you can start it. Once it hits the limit switch, you can take your material out of the machine, turn the switch on, and return to start. That's a safety precaution and therefore it doesn't allow you to get your hands involved in the material because once this drive wheel starts spinning and moving it's going to continue to spin whether you have a profile in there or not. On the back side of the TP4046 we have the uh, rebar shear. This has a maximum capacity of cutting strength of, of a number nine rebar. You have a lid or safety protection lid here that, work, that operates on a limit switch. So once this is in the up position, the shear will not operate. Once you bring this down, it engages, disengages the limit switch and you're now free to make a cut. How you would operate this machine is you can stick a piece of rebar in here and you'll see the cutting material is basically a block that slides in a north to south direction. And how you would operate that is you can put the material in, you bring your lid down, and you hit the start button. And as you watch, you can see it's going to hit this limit switch here, which initiates the block to slide and is going to cut the material. Let's do that one more time so you can see.
the protective cover, take your piece out. The TP4046 rebar bender in combination shear comes with a standard set of tooling and I have them displayed here and we want to go through a little bit about the purpose of each. Uh, the machine works on limit switches and these are the pins that control that. You have a set of five formers ranging from just under two inches all the way up to an inch and an eighth and those are standard. Uh, you also have some various counter bending blocks and some pins here. The counter bending block will be used on all formers from five and an eighth all the way down. And that is what this is used. And this is the square pin, and I'll show you a little bit about how that is adjusted and installed. And these are the counter bending pins that go along with it. Now these come standard with the machine. Uh, and over here, this is an option, and one of the things that we're going to talk about a little bit, and I'm going to show you during the demonstration. This is a bend arm extension. The bend arm extension is used when you have formers over the size of five and an eighth. Okay, and you have a maximum OD size, I believe, on a, on a former of up to 16 and 5 eighths inches. These are your counter bending block, this is your bend arm extension, and these are the four pins that come with this tooling. Now what I'm going to do is demonstrate how we install the bend arm extension where the drive pins and the counter bending pins are installed and basically how to set this up and make a bend for it. Take the bend arm extension. As you can see right here, it does have a little cutout. It's milled on the bottom. That goes down face first onto the drive wheel. The second thing you want to do is take your former pin, drop it in. Make sure it goes all the way to the bottom because that's what's going to hold this former in place as it rotates. Secondly, you're going to take your number five pin and insert it in the drive hole. That needs to be flush. One thing you also know is on the side of this there is a set screw that locks that drive pin in place just to keep give it a little bit more uh, foundation during the, during the bending cycle. The second, the first thing you want to do also when you look at this is find the former. In this case, we're just going to use a standard former, one that comes with the machine. The next step in the process is to install your counter bending block. You're going to take this pin here, drop it all the way through, take the number five pin, drop it in there till it fits flush. Okay. So now we basically what you have is you're going to get your profile. In this case we're going to use a flat square stock. And then we're going to find a use a combination of counterfeit devices to see which one would be the best fit. One thing to keep in mind is that these counterbending formers and pins are hardened to a 54 Rockwell. So in this case, what I have here is I can't use one of these counterbending formers here. I've got a counterbending former here that's going to grab it, and I'm going to bend this around the specified former. In this case, this is the one that is measures five and an eighth across an OD. Okay. One more on a side note about the directional switch. We discussed earlier that the one position will bring it clockwise, the number two will take the direction counterclockwise. When you start the machine up and when you wire it up, you want to make sure that the machine is in phase. And therefore, when you do your test spins prior to this, you want to make sure that if it's out of phase and you're in number one and it goes counterclockwise, then you know you need to change the phase. So it's a little safe, safety measure to make sure that uh, the machine's in phase and the direction is, is, the machine is bending in the direction that you want it to go. We're going to initiate a bend here. Uh, what I have is I have my former, a counter bending pin, a counter bending die and former here as well on the bend arm extension. So, 
what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is initiate the bend by hitting start, and then as once it hits that limit switch, you want to hit the e-stop button to stop it so you can pull your profile out. So we're going to initiate the bend. Pull it out nice and safe. Take the e-stop off. Get ready, and then return to start. One thing, as you begin your bend, notice that we can keep these. What I like to do is try to keep the face of these two counterbending devices square. Makes for more true of a bend in terms of leg length. Now, with the bend arm extension. One thing you also want to keep in mind is you see how this comes over the drive wheel. Okay, and if you're not paying attention and you have this in a counterclockwise manner, this is this would actually come through and hit this and you can definitely tear the machine up. So you want to make sure before you initiate the bend what direction you are bending. So we want to make sure we've got the selector switch at clockwise. Okay, we have our profile situated squared it up. One thing you'll have to know and measure beforehand is to try to figure out how long the leg length of the U-bolt uh, needs to be and you can make that measurement. In this case we've got plenty enough material here and I just want to initiate a simple bend. One thing also what we're going to do is we're going to go 180 degrees so I'm taking this pin and dropped it in. I want to over bend it maybe just a little bit to kind of get a visual and see how much where that bend needs to be and then I can make my changes moving forward. And we're going to initiate the bend, keep your hands free. The formers are in place, our counter bending pins are in place, our counter bending former is also in place. We have it snugged up again. Right place here. What we're going to do is initiate the bin. Direction is where we want it. He stops off. We have the green light. We're going to press start. Begin the bin.